Hello, my name is Paul Boag, and for 16 years I ran a successful web design agency before I transitioned to be an independent consultant. These days I spend most of my time helping agency owners and freelancers build the kind of business that will facilitate their lives and enable them to do what it is that they want to do. My latest endeavour is a playbook which has everything you need to kickstart your agency to help educate your clients so projects run more smoothly and your relationships work better, to simplify your workflows and as a result boost your profits. So in this video I want to walk you through that web design playbook, that agency playbook and show you all that it contains and how it can help your business. So once you've gone ahead and purchased the playbook, what you'll find is you're taken to a page like this. Now the playbook has been built in Notion, which is a tool that you can keep your playbook in and edit it and improve it and customize it to your own specific needs. Or alternatively, you can export the content out and have it pretty much in any format on any website that you want. But what you will see when you open up the playbook is the home page, which introduces you to the basic things that the playbook is going to cover. Now, there are some comments throughout the application that will guide you through setting it up and customizing it to your own needs. But when you duplicate this playbook across into your own Notion install, and by the way, that's a completely free in, um, account that you have to open up if you want to keep it on Notion. But once you've duplicated it across, none of those comments will come across so that you've got a nice clean basis to start with. Now, just to give you a very brief overview of what a playbook includes, it includes all kinds of content that will help you better run your business. And they basically split into three areas. There's content which is educational material for clients. So this is the kind of thing that you can just send out to your clients various stages during your project and help them to better understand what's going to happen and what the process is and what their responsibilities are. Then there is content that really is project management content that outlines the processes that you will go through in running your particular project with individual clients. So that's relevant both for you internally to help you run your projects more efficiently, but also aid your clients as well to help them understand what's gonna happen. And then the third type of content is really internal organizational content for you and is not the kind of thing that clients would be particularly interested in, although they're welcome to have a look at it maybe if they want to. And so what I've done is color code all of the content on the website. So you can see blue content is educational material, green content is project management related, and red content is for internal organizations. So essentially, the first thing that you'll find in the playbook is a breakdown of how you run your projects. Now, everything in here is completely customizable, so you can edit it to suit the particular type of work that you do or the particular way you like working. But what I've done is outline best practice, if you like, that you can then adjust to your specific needs. So we've got how I run a project and it's broken down into these six phases. How you approach new work, how you do reviews and recommendations to understand what needs to be done in the project, the design and prototyping stage, development and build, going live, and then ongoing optimization. But that isn't all that's in the playbook. We've also got a whole load of best practice guides. So these are the kinds of things that your clients might need to know, like how they plan their project, how they write for the web, understanding their audiences, dealing with design subjectivity and various other issues. So these are best practice guides that really are designed to help educate the client about the nuances of running a web project. And also there's great advice in there for you as well that should help you to better manage things, especially around things like design sign-off and the problems with design subjectivity. We've also got processes, which are various internal processes that you use to run a project. So you can see an overview of the entire web design process in here. We've got things like design principles, which is how you're going to make decisions during your projects. Things like how to manage the scope creep of your projects and then advice for 
if you're working with external developers, they're going to need to know about how you work with them. There's going to be issues around your hosting environment and how you interact with your clients. And then the final area are management tools. Now, these are various resources in terms of project management, how you manage kind of your logging credentials and security, how you deal with your clients and keeping a, a directory of all of your different clients and contact information, and then also a repository of apps that you might use so that you can easily get in and out of those apps and onboard maybe new staff that join you. Let's look at these areas in a little bit more detail. How we run projects. Instead of diving in there, what I'm going to do is go down and go into our process overview. And the process overview gives you an outline of how a whole project would run through from beginning to end. OK, so we've got the business development stage. We've got reviews and recommendations. Then concurrently, you will do design and prototyping and build. Then you go into launch and post launch iteration. And for each of these, you can see how I've got various bullet points just to guide you about the different conversations that you need to have. Some of those bullet points are expandable out so you can get additional information. And then you can also dive in and find more specific information about individual parts of the process, like the statement of work. But if we work our way through these top level sections, these five top level sections here, you will find get a sense of the kind of depth of information that's held within the playbook. So business development. So this outlines the a general approach of how you can handle new work as it comes in. And broadly speaking, what I've done is I've divided projects up into different types, very simple landing pages, informational websites, more advanced website builds, and then fully custom builds. It might be that you need to make some changes and customize this based on your specific circumstances, as I explain at the top of the page here. But broadly speaking, that should cover most scenarios. And then I've also identified what are called add-on packages. So these might be additional services or packages that you offer alongside your main offering. So design delighters are a really uh, is a really good package that you might want to offer that is for those added extras like um, animations and interactive elements that are more complex that you might want to price and sell separately. And then there's things like post-launch support. But in your case, you might do SEO as well, or you might do content migration. There could be a number of additional packages you might want to add. Then with any one of these, we could just dive in and you'll find even more information from a business development perspective of when this package is suitable, when it's not suitable, things to consider when you're going through pricing this kind of work, and what questions you should be asking as part of the sales process. And then details about what you should specify in the contract so that things aren't left out and there isn't confusion later on the uh, line. And actually, we've got a whole section just dedicated to writing a statement of work and the kind of information that needs to go into a statement of work. So as you can see, there's a real breakdown of the different information that you need to include in your business development process. Now, if we return back to the home page of the playbook, we can repeat this process for each of the different stages. So we've got the business development phase, then we go into review and recommendation. And again, here's a breakdown of everything you need to be doing in the review and recommendation, all the different things that you need to look at and to consider what deliverables you'll pr uh, produce, what your minimal viable product might be defined as. It's all laid out here. And then in some particular areas where you get into things like doing stakeholder interviews or user research or competitive analysis, again, you will either find links off to more information within the playbook. Here's a guide to understanding your audience. Or in other occasions, what you'll find is that you'll find links off to my own website where you'll get more information from articles that I've written in the past, which go into all of these subjects in a lot more detail there too. Now, I'm not going to go through every single stage of the playbook, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how you can see projects are broken down and how you can learn about what you need to be doing 
from everything from an initial review to to define the scope of the project all the way through to pushing a site live safely. But what about the other aspects of the playbook, things like the best practice guides and the processes? If we dive into some of these best practices uh, guides, just to, to give you a sense of the kind of things that we cover here. For example, I've got a whole guide for writing for the web. And this is the kind of thing you can send to a client so that they make informed and good decisions when they're delivering content to you. And it gives an overview and breakdown of exactly how you need to go about approaching writing for the web in a way that's both accessible and scannable. And we've got guides on all kinds of subjects here, from, as I say, writing for the web to understanding your audience, to SEO, to creating compelling landing pages and everything in between. And I think some of these guides will be very useful to you as well. So for example, my guide on testing with users does a detailed breakdown of lots of different types of testing that you could undertake that is very lightweight and easy to do. And there's lots of links through to detailed articles that explain how to do these different types of testing. So as you can see, this is ideal, not only for someone that's got a well-established agency or freelance business, but also somebody who's starting out that wants to learn about some of the different tools and methodologies that you can use in running your um, agency or freelance business. Now in your processes, you get into some um, more interesting areas here. So you've already seen the process overview that gives you that kind of at a glance summary of everything that um, a project will involve. But in addition to that, we've got things like design principles. It's really good to have a set of design principles about how you're gonna make decisions within your project. And I suggested some that I feel are a good starting point, but again, you can customize this on based on your needs and what it is that you want to, to achieve. And this is brilliant for sharing with clients and letting them understand how you go about approaching the design process. Then we get into guides that you can give out to developers as well that outline how you like to work. If, if you have external developers that you use and what your expectations are of them and what you expect them to deliver to you. And then we've got things like how to deal with clients and, and the need for good client communication and setting expectations with the client. All of the information that you need laid out there really clearly. But there's some tools built into this as well. You probably already noticed down here, we can create a, a staff directory so that when you point your clients at your agency playbook, they get quick access to all of the information that they need about um, the different members of staff and even down to what projects that they're working on and what, uh, what uh, clients that they're responsible for so that your clients can find out who's their point of contact. And you could easily add more fields to this if you wanted to within Notion. Okay, so just to give you some other ideas of, of functionality that I've built in, I've also created a repository of useful apps now, the, ideally, this needs to be a repository of apps that you use. So you might use different apps to the ones that I've listed here. But as you can see, I've put in quite a large selection of apps to get you started that you might find help you with different things. So you can click on any one of those apps and you can see what kind of areas it helps in. You can get a brief description of how it helps and you get a link off to it. Now, you could also put in usernames and passwords so that everybody in your agency can quickly access the apps that you use as an organization. Even as a freelancer, it's really useful to have a central repository where you can keep all of that stuff. In to on top of the apps that you've got, we've also got a client directory, which is essentially a very basic CRM. It might be that you've already got a CRM where you keep all of this information, in which case you don't need it within your playbook, you can just link off to that tool that you're using and strip this out. But if you don't have something like this, it might be very useful to be able to keep all of that information together from the organization your client works through to their contact details and what projects their primary contacts with and what projects their stakeholders on. In addition to the client, client directory, we've got project directory, which is a breakdown of all of your projects that are currently running. And as you can see, you can view this in lots of different ways. So this is showing it as 
the different stages as it moves through, a project moves through, it works its way down the stages, pretty much like you would get on a Trello board. Or alternatively, you might want to just have a very simple list of all of your active projects and what phase they're currently in. Or you might want to track your sales in here as well, where you can see how much a project is, when it's due to come in, and so you can see how much money you can are potentially going to make each month. And with each of these projects, you can dive into them and you can add any notes that you wish to about the project. You can keep in information about where, you know, for example, upload your signed contract to it, whether it's got any sub projects and various other things. Now, again, it might be that you've already got a project management tool and I'm not suggesting that you replace it. What I've done here is basically demonstrate that your playbook needs a location where it has you know, easy access to all of your projects, easy access to your client uh, details and that kind of stuff. The same is true, obviously, of login credentials. So you might want to keep all of your login credentials for your various clients in here, although obviously you don't want to share that bit with your clients. So there you go. That's a brief overview of the agency playbook, what it does and what it enables you to do. I'm hoping you can see it's a really useful way of keeping organized, having a process that makes you look more professional to your clients and also educates your clients about what's going to happen throughout the project. And since I've started using these playbooks, I have found that my projects run much smoother and are much more profitable because I have a process in place and I want to give you access to that too.